Welcome to this episode of Dream Farm. I want to talk about, real quick, the uh, comparison of three different ways to plant. This may be a little bit obvious to some viewers, but uh, I'm going to move through it fairly quickly. So hopefully you'll humor me and uh, take a look here. I find it really fascinating, um, but I guess I'm a geek when it comes to growing stuff, especially food plots. So I've got uh, three fields. They're about, gosh, they almost touch in this little area of the farm. So it's more or less the same dirt. They were planted at more or less the same time. And they were planted with the exact same seed. It was Whitetail Institute Wintergreens blend. And that's a brassica blend. So they would have gotten the same rain uh, you know, more or less the same soil quality. All else being equal, the only real difference is how they were planted. So the one that I'm standing in right now, this was no-till drilled into uh, an existing bean plot that had failed. So there was uh, no soil preparation, sprayed with glyphosate, killed the weeds, drilled the winter greens right into it, fertilized it with urea, and then uh, just let it go. And as you can see, uh, this one just did really, really well. This one is kind of the poster child for how the rescue plots are supposed to look. And I'm sure that I could have hit it with even more fertilizer and it would be even taller yet, but there's spots in here where the brassicas are knee high. And if we would have gotten any amount of rain at all, uh, there's no telling how thick that this plot would have been. Um, wouldn't even really had to been much thicker than it is right now and it would have been perfect. So this one I would say, like I said, is about as good as you can do on a, uh, you know, recovering a, a droughted out food plot, which like I said, was the soybeans planted back in May. Dream Farm is brought to you by Whitetail Institute Food Plot Blends, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail App, Hoyt Archery, Wildlife Farming, and PH Outdoors. So the next one, as I keep moving up the valley, is a little small, maybe quarter acre plot that all I did in this one was spray the grass and I didn't mow it, didn't do any, well, did I mow it? I think I did, I mowed it and then I sprayed it. And then, uh, you know, as, as it grew back a little bit, I sprayed it. So I got a good kill. And then I broadcast right into that, the winter greens. Didn't put them into the ground at all, just put them up on top of the soil, you know, in the thatch of the dying grass. So this one did, you know, fairly poorly overall. Most of what you see in there is thistles. There are, I guess I've always felt like when it's really dry, the only thing that does super well is the weeds. And in this plot, it was the thistles. You know, we got some of the winter greens coming up in here, but not anywhere near enough to feel like this was a success. And maybe with another rain or two, maybe this one will still recover and still pop. But uh, we got a plane going over right over the top. So this one I would say overall, I would count as a failure. You know, it's not something that you would look at and say, okay, I want my food plot to turn out like this. Maybe with another rain or two, you know, this one might bounce, you know, and still produce something, but uh, I'm counting it out. So that practice of spreading it right on top of the ground didn't work this year. And you gotta qualify this entire episode with the fact that this was a really dry year. So let's just say that these are the three planting practices and we're comparing how they did on a dry year. I think on a wet year, you'd see a lot different results. So now we're gonna move up the valley just a little bit further. And there's about a, oh, a one acre to one and a half acre plot. And this one was, uh, again, it was drilled, but first I had used the uh, wildlife farming three-in-one soil conditioner and worked up the dirt. So I had conditioned it, if you want to call it that, tilled it, you know, made it, you know, probably six inches of fairly soft uh, seed bed. And I did that because I wanted to smooth it out because long term I think this is going to be a cornfield for me. So I didn't want to just spray it and drill it and, you know, hope for the best. I wanted to get it into shape so that next spring I can put corn in here and it'll, you know, it'll be a pretty, pretty nice smooth setup. Well, as you can see, this one did decent. Uh, in the edges, where the ground was a little bit harder, it did better. 
I think it held the moisture there a little bit better. Maybe it didn't till quite as well. Uh, the seed didn't go in quite as deep. And as you go further into the middle of the plot, it didn't do as well. I think the, the dirt was just too soft and I was planting too deep there. It might have been okay if we'd have gotten plenty of rain, but we just didn't get a lot of rain, so it didn't do well. Uh, this one I'd call a medium success. So on a dry year, the way that did the very best was just a straight up no-till because you conserve all the subsoil moisture. You know, by tilling it, you bring all of that up and then it dries out and then you lose it. But by using that uh, pH outdoors, uh, I guess I had the G8, it's a no-till drill, that goes right into that, you know, subsoil moisture and it germinates right away and grows. That's the ticket on dry years. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, even on normal years, that's the ticket. But uh, it worked really well this year. So long term, I think the least amount of tillage that I can do, the better. The only time I feel like just broadcasting it on top of the ground, um, like that middle plot, that little quarter acre plot, the only time I think that's going to work is when it's really kind of a wet year. And, and again, not only did these all get planted the same, they all got fertilized the same. I think the comparison was very fair. So I guess take it for what it's worth on a dry year and maybe most years, the no-till drilling into the subsoil moisture is definitely the way to go. And, uh, it's def and, and for sure, that's what I'm gonna be doing, you know, whenever possible in the future. Well, I appreciate you joining me. Uh, I, I'm gonna back off now on some of these Dream Farm episodes. I, keep, I love doing them, they're so much fun. Um, maybe I'll do a couple more yet, but I just don't wanna be running around the farm a lot now. It's uh, the 8th of September and I've just got my trail cameras out. You can pop over to the Bowhunting Whitetails series and you can see some of that, you know, how that's gonna take shape. But now it's time to back off a little bit on the farm. You know, I've been all over the place all kinds of projects, leaving scent everywhere, running equipment all over. Now I want to back off some, just kind of let the place settle down, let the deer feel comfortable, you know, find them on the camera, see where they're living. So I'll probably produce, produce a couple more of the dream farms. Uh, I know we're going to be planting acorns again, so that'll be definitely one or two episodes. And I'm sure there'll be a couple other projects, but uh, it'll slow down now as we get into the season. But I appreciate you joining me, and we'll see you right back here in the future for the next episode of Dream Farm. And remember to always dream big.